Welcome back, fans of the show. We are today talking about the Trafalgar new updates. Um, in particular, the state of Arizona. There's going to be new polls. Actually, there are polls, and I'm going to be talking about them today. Um, these are going to be um, covered in uh, good detail. Um, these are concerning the um, elections in particular between Mark Kelly, the bald astronaut, and um, Blake Masters, who has a very cool name. Okay, And then we have that Senate election. And beyond that, we have the governor's election between Katie Hobbs, who's bisexual, I believe, I'm just saying that. And on top of that, we have um, uh, Carrie Lake, who is a uh, presumptive nominee in 2028, in my opinion. But let's keep that into the future. She is very talented. And we're going to be talking about all these intricate details going forward right now. Anyways, guys, so I have the current uh, governor's map, more or less, um, here on YAPMS. And this will more or less be what we are working with today. Um, obviously, this is subject, subject to change in less than a month, I believe, when the elections are around in November. But we're in October, and we're gonna be, uh, gonna be analyzing this uh, poll coming out. Two of these. Um, so first of all, we're gonna start with the governor's election. Of course, um, we see that Carrie Lake is at a uh, forty-nine point two percent vote total, whereas with Katie Hobbs, we have a total of forty-six point four percent, and there's four point four percent undecided. So that is a difference over here of uh, about two point eight percent. Now this is important to realize because Arizona is a uh, tipping point state, a state that is very gray, you know, in the purple, let's say. And so it, it is very important that if you have a uh, multiple multiple percentage lead, that, that is really significant and something to point out. And then just beyond that, we're looking at a state where there's demographic shift. There's a lot of Mexicans here. You might think it's going more Democrat, but then all of a sudden we're seeing the Biden administration being so unpopular to the point where even the Democratic leaning polls have them down almost 10 percent in the polling. So his approval rating is under 45. It's worse than Trump's was most of the time. And so with that being said, even with the media on his side, he is still losing. And Kanye points this out. And a lot of other influential figures point out the fact that the media is against Donald Trump and the Republican Party. And yet even still, the Republicans are winning in the generic ballot polls, as pointed out by people like Red Eagle Politics and the friends of the show we are um all discussing this uh political trend that is anti-democrat you know and obviously the midterms are very honestly something that is very um anti-establishmentarian which is why we're looking at the democrats losing ground all over the place in the vast majority of the swing states um in regards to the uh 2022 midterm so that's probably why um you see carrie lake winning here and now this is going to be really significant because she is one of the most far-right people in the country in regards to electable politicians and there's going to be a lot of uh of boogers, a lot of people that are insignificant, people that you can flick away, that are further right than Kerry Lake, that um, say that they're more MAGA than Kerry Lake. But the fact is, is that virtually none of them are even electable in the first place. So with that being said, Kerry Lake is a MAGA candidate and she does not shy away from Trump at all. She's running completely on the MAGA message. And that's important given that Donald Trump did lose the last election. Um, you know, obviously, you know, I, I you know, pfft. Anyway, uh, so, yeah, no, so Donald Trump officially did lose. Look up Wikipedia. You know, he did lose. Um, you know what I mean? Anyways, you know, we're going to watch the TOS, okay, optics check. Um, anyway, we're going to be discussing how this is so important because a 2.8% lead in a swing state is ginormous, and it's like the equivalent of being up seven in Missouri, okay? So it's a big difference. And then beyond this, the undecided. People might be talking about how the undecided is going to be uh, something that could uh, make the Democrat win, but the fact is, is that the vast majority of undecideds are Republicans in this case. Most independents and people that are undecided are going to be people that are skeptical of the Republican Party on, uh, let's say, abortion. But at the end of the day, we'll be voting for the better economic outcome and in regards to voting for the Republicans. So that being said, I think you can hedge your bets on the Republican Party getting like 60 to 70 percent of the undecideds on their um, part, or at least not voting Democrat. So when we're looking at a 60-40 to even better split for the Republicans on the undecided, we're looking at a uh, net 1 percent gained out of the undecided, let's say, in which case we can see Kerry Lake winning with like 50, 51 percent over uh, Kitty Hobbs, who could have like a 48 percent. So if we win by a lean margin, that is ginormous. And, you know, so it's going to be pretty cool. Um, anyway, so, you know, that's going to be pretty cool. Now let's think for a while here. Anyways, so, um, I had to take a little break here, but we're back. And basically, I yeah, know, so the governor's race is again, very important because the Republicans are going to gain a very important politician. That's going to be a fixture of the Republican party for the, ne for the next perceivable future. Um, you know, if DeSantis is president, then she could be a vice president if Trump is, et cetera. So we're looking at somebody who can very well be a permanent fixture to the Republican Party, more so than Jeb Bush or anybody like that in recent history. So with that being said, um, we can look at the poll and, you know, the intricate details are showing that, you know, the margin of error is relatively small given the fact that 
you know, it's such a margin of victory for Kerry Lake. It's looking very positive. And this is a very recent poll. This was done a couple days ago. This is um, October 19th, by the way. Now, if we were going to look at the Senate race, um, we have an updated poll here as well because I'm going to be covering the Senate too. And look, Mark Kelly is ahead by um, 1%, 47.4 to 46.4% over Blake Masters with Mark Victor, who nobody knows who that is. That might as well be a nobody. Casper is running for libertarian candidacy. I don't know. The point being is that that's a 2.7% um, amount for the libertarians. L, common libertarian L. We all know this. Undecided is 3.5%. Now, the undecided is going to be very, very important here because the undecided are going to be leaning Republican. So if that's the case, then we're looking at, you know, Blake Masters needing, let's say, two-thirds of the undecided vote to go to him. And if that's the case, then, um, you know, in that case, um, Blake Masters can very narrowly edge it out. Now, we know that Trafalgar is more favorable to the Republicans than the other polls, but the other polls are also jacked up. So, you know, is that really a bias or is that just a correction and compensation by the Trafalgar people? We love Trafalgar, by the way. It's a top three pollster in the world. Red Eagle would agree with this. I think it's number one because, you know, I get the most views talking about it. So I'm biased. But the point being is that Trafalgar is based and it's red pilled on a myriad of different questions. And one of them is that Blake Masters is probably going to win. But even with this um, favorable rating, He's still losing the election, but the undecided Sioux tend to uh, sway Republicans. So we're looking at Blake Masters having a 55% chance of winning the election in 2022. And then also keep in mind that Mark Kelly has no riz. He has no clout. And what do I mean by that? I, you know, I actually changed my mind. He has a clout. He has a lot of clout actually because of his wife and his optics. But that being said, Blake Masters, I mean, Mark Kelly, the bald guy, well, let's clarify, the bald, shorter guy um, has no popularity as in he, nobody hears about him. Nobody talks about the guy. It's AstroTurf. I walk on the college campus, and while they do shill for Mark Kelly on the on the campus, you know, those fucking Democrats, by the way, um, they clearly do not feel enthusiastic like the nerdy Republicans do for Blake Masters. So there's an energy differential, okay? So if we're looking at people that are going to be showing up in person to vote, we're going to definitely see a surging of Blake Masters more so than for Mark Kelly. That's 100% confident that I'm being right now. That's I'm confident as ever. Um, so that, you know, that is really important to point out. Now, again... In the state of Arizona, there are more Republicans than Democrats. That's also a good advantage to have built into the House. And then on top of that, we have the people that are non-registered parties. Um, those people, these purple individuals, and no, that's not the Minnesota Vikings. These other purple individuals are very uh, mid. They are um, swayable by the election. That being said, the midterm tends to uh, be dictated by whoever is in office. You know, obviously the people in the middle are voting against whoever is in office, especially when they're unpopular, like Joe Biden who is less popular than um, George Bush was 20 years ago in 2002 when the Republicans kept both houses, I believe, in 2002 in that midterm election, which was a fluke. But the point being is that, you know, obviously these people that are undecided are going to lean Republican. The question is, how much of a margin do you need there? In the case of Carrie Lake, it doesn't really matter if she is going to win regardless of the undecided vote. Whereas with Blake Masters, you're going to need a favorable distribution of the purple people to go into the red side. Um, and that being said, you know, I do predict that to be the case. Um, and age participation is also important to see how many old people vote. The older the electorate, the more favorable it is to Republicans in the vast majority of cases. You know, in certain nuanced cases, like maybe Vermont, the young people and the old people vote liberal. In rural Massachusetts, they vote liberal, even if they're white, too. So that's kind of surprising. But the point being is that, you know, older skews um, more Republican. Also, black people, I think young black people vote to the right of old black people or, you know, it, you know, it's, it's maybe the millennials over the Zoomers. I don't know. But the point being is that it's kind of nuanced. But generally speaking, you want an older electorate if you want the Republicans to win. You want a whiter electorate if you want the Republicans to win. Again, there's exceptions. Um, the white people in uh, Delaware vote Democrat. The white people in, uh, in New Hampshire most years, sometimes, you know, uh, what else? Maine, you know, so, there, you know, there's flukes. There's New England, of course. Um, gender participation, there was more females voting um, in this poll uh, surveyed by like 9%. So they do tend to oversample females, but that's just like a corrective technicality that is very nerdy. So I won't explain that. If you want some nerdy ex explanation over the gender uh, ratio balance on the polling, go look up Richard Barris, which I used to watch 20, I mean, in 2020. Anyway, um, so yeah, no, that's, that's more intricate than my pedigree. So yeah, no, so it seems to be like the females are overrepresented even more than in real life. So if anything, that benefits the Republicans. Um, and females do vote more Democrat, keep in mind, right? By like, I don't even remember what percentage, but it's something um, noteworthy. Now you can look at the um, cross tabs or whatever this is called. I think Red Eagle calls them cross tabs, but you can see like this little element of like a uh, spreadsheet, um, you know, giving different columns to different categorizations of age and gender. Um, and, you know, purportedly you can see that Mark Kelly is winning um, across the board by, you know, 1% over here at the final tabulation on the left. But then you can also see that, um, 
that uh you know the gender imbalance is palpable over here so just keep this all in mind also the libertarian again all hate and disrespect towards libertarians you know obviously you should guys you guys should be voting one way or the other just pick a side please you know the, the whole principled stance of i don't want to vote for the big party is just really lame and uh it's a gay thing to do and it's just very um indecisive i don't like it if you want to vote libertarian how about you just don't vote instead how about you just sit it out I don't want to see a third party. Either pick one or the other, okay? You cannot say, you, you don't want to be the Rob Lowe of elections where you just want to sit, watch the Super Bowl with an NFL hat. Like, what a doofus, bro. Like, just pick a team, please. All right, so, and preferably pick the red side. And if you're not going to pick the red side, then fuck it, just pick the blue side. I don't care, but just to vote. And if you don't want to vote, then just sit it out. But don't vote third party. It doesn't make sense. You might as well just write your name in, write in something funny, write in, you know, Ray Lewis, uh, you know, write in Antonio Brown, something just completely random. If you want, fuck it, vote for Kanye again. I don't know. So just do whatever you please, but just don't vote uh, uh, libertarian. It really annoys me. Anyway, um, then the last detail for the video, we're going to be covering the crosstabs of the Carrie Lake versus Katie Hobbs election, the battles of the of the um, KK, and uh, again, again, the first name, not, not, not the group from 100 years ago. Uh, so here we go. So as you can see here, again, same numbers, 49.2 to 46.4. Katie Hobbs is the worst candidate than Mark Kelly. Um, that's just an optics thing. You know, people look at Katie Hobbs and they don't trust her as much as they feel that they can trust the astronaut guy. So that's important to figure out here. And also keep in mind that there's no libertarian vote um, that is significant um, in the Kerry Lake race, which goes to show how the libertarians are a being to the, and, you know, a thorn to the side of Republicans, um, you know, globally. So, you know, fuck them, I guess. I don't know. But Listen up, boys. Um, you're looking at a gender distribution, again, that is more female um, for the Democrats as well. Look, 52% of Carrie Lake's voters are men, 46 female. Whereas with Katie Hobbs, it's 48% female, 44% male. So you can see that there's a gender divide. Also, most of the undecideds are female. So that's also something to keep in mind. So, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, they, these could skew more Democrat if that's the case, if it's more female than otherwise. But if you look at the undecided for um, Blake Masters, the undecideds tend to be more male than female. So if that's the case, then, you know, maybe the undecideds go a little more for Katie Hobbs and for Carrie Lake, but Carrie Lake already has the lead, so she'll probably still win. And if you look at the undecideds for um for Blake Masters and uh and Mark Kelly, most of them are men. So those tend to uh, skew Republican and conservative, in which case, you know, they could make uh, Blake Masters win by a little amount. So there you go. So that's basically the Trafalgar polling um, aggregates. Uh, I'm telling you all the little information there. Um, you're welcome for telling you this because, you know, very few people on the Internet will bother doing this. And also shout out to Real American Politics for um, inspiring me to, like, uh, do these videos again because I stopped doing politics for a while. But, you know, it is the election season, so we might as well pick it back up. Also, guys, comment down below what you think of my new voice. I'm obviously 19, so hopefully it isn't as girly as it used to be before. Um, but, you know, it's called we do a, a little puberty so to speak. Uh, anyways, also shout out to Matt Gagnon, who has a very small channel on, on uh, YouTube, but he also started doing Trafalgar videos way in the past and then inspired me to make them better and get a lot more views. So thank you, Matthew, for giving me a profitable um, video idea. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Comment down below anything you want that isn't uh, going to get me banned off of YouTube and I'll reply to virtually everything. If it's anything relevant, I'll take care of you. Anyways, boys, see y'all in the next video. Bye.